everybody, this is Dream, and today we have a nice four-game slate for you for college basketball. This, straight, this slate is a little bit hard. Uh, there's actually quite a bit of value, but they're also kind of streaky. Uh, but on a small slate like this, that you have to take some chances. Um, and then there's some good plays that's a higher in the spectrum as well. Uh, but everybody is kind of, it's kind of a wonky slate. Uh, with that said, uh, thank you guys for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Please smash that like and subscribe button. really helps the channel a lot. Uh, with that said, let's get into the slate itself. At the end of the video, I will break down each individual team and tell you what I think about it. Uh, with that said, though, let's get into our top plays. Uh, Hunter Madondo for Wyoming. Now, he is on the lowest, one of the lower scoring teams on the slate, but he's been really consistent uh, lately, having a pretty good uh, outputs, even if his team loses, which they seem to lose quite a bit. Uh, he has even getting blown out sometimes. He still manages to put up some decent numbers most of the time. Uh, he does have a floor in the mid-20s for today, uh, but he has some good upside as well. Uh, he's got as high upside as anybody on the slate at around 45, 50 fantasy points. And so he has that opportunity. And he's also had over 40 fantasy points in three of the last five, despite losing two of those games and actually being blown out kind of in one of them. So I expect him to play well here. He does tend to get some assists and rebounds, which helps, as well as just uh, scoring as well and he shouldn't have too much issue in this particular game scoring and so i look for him to have a really solid game here uh he is a little bit expensive but i think you can fit him in with the other value plays available then we're going to look at Jalen worley uh, now he's in the t game with the highest uh, scoring slate and florida state even though they're predicted to lose by eight points they're still one of the higher scoring teams on the slate uh and uh he does have a high ceiling, but a very low floor, and you're going to see in his game log here, he has games where he gets over 33, 35 fantasy points and some under 10. He is worth the risk today, though. He should It should be a faster scoring game, and he does play a pretty good amount of minutes, assuming he stays out of foul trouble, which for the most part he does. Uh, so he has good upside here. Um, his floor is concerning, but on a small slate, it's worth taking a chance on him, I think. He's probably one of my favorite plays on the slate simply because of his price. Uh, then we're going to look at Langston Love. He and Bonner, uh, another teammate, both have some upside here as Keontae George will miss this game. And he's near minimum price, which definitely helps. He played 22 minutes after George got injured in the last game and scored 16 fantasy points. I expect similar or better. He had one start early in the year where he scored 36 fantasy points. Uh, he seems like a pretty safe uh, value play on the slate. I'm a little surprised he's this cheap considering uh, he's actually been more expensive for most of the season. I um, mean, he's, he's been up and down, I guess, but uh, he's had some good uh, he's had some good games coming off the bench, which he typically does, and he may or may not start this game. Uh, if Bonner was to start, he would definitely be somebody to take a look at, but uh, I think Love is safer today, and I expect him to potentially start or at least play a significant uh, role off the bench for a high-scoring team on the slate. Then we're going to get our forwards here. Um, uh, we're going to look at Amando Baycott. Now, he's only had three double-doubles in the last five games. He hasn't been quite as good lately as he's not scored 20 real points in nine games straight. But he is on the best team scoring-wise in the slate. And if he can stay out of foul trouble, which he should be able to do here, he should be able to pay off. Uh, but his floor is riskier as well since he hasn't played well as late. He's also more expensive than Maldondo, who I mentioned earlier which makes him less appealing, especially at his price. Now, there is plenty of value plays, so you could consider him, but he's still kind of risky. Um, and then we're going to look at Darian Williams. Uh, I really like Darian Williams today for Nevada. They're projected to win the game, and they're the second highest scoring team on the slate. Uh, and he has had some uh, bad games uh, throughout the year, but he's been really good over 30 minutes, and he's uh, been good in six straight games. And I expect him to continue that. He's uh, He's... The type of guy where I feel like he's kind of a safe play, whereas he's probably not going to hurt you. He may not, like, blow your roster up where you can get first place because of him, but uh, he should be a stable option on a slate that really doesn't have much stability at all. He's a pretty fair price for what he can do, and he's played pretty well as of late. And then Cameron Corrin, he's a value play. Uh, I don't love him, but he has a he is a starter. Um, his floor has been pretty stable, and he has had a couple bad games, but his floor looks better than other players in his price range, including uh, Cor uh, uh, um, Hunter Thompson for Wyoming. Uh, I think he's a little bit safer than him, despite the floor being pretty low. The ceiling is also not that horrible. Uh, he's had uh, pretty good minutes, and he's been playing around 22 to 23 minutes a game lately. I debated looking at Hunter Thompson, like I mentioned, 
for Wyoming, but I just feel Corhan is a bit safer and he has better usage. So I think he's a safer option at this price range. So that's the six guys that I have as my top core plays for this slate. Um, obviously, I think uh, Corhan and uh, Warley are the two that are probably the lowest rated of the five of the six I mentioned. At, and so uh, Madondo, Love, Baycott, and and Williams are my top plays. If you want to say core plays, you could definitely do that. Uh, but uh, I think uh, Maradondo and Love are the safest of all of them. So uh, with that said, let's get into the core pl to the uh, breakdown of each individual game. Uh, we're going to start with UNC here. Um, UNC is favored to win the highest scoring game on the slate. They have the highest uh, scoring team. Um, they also have some nice upside as well. Uh, Baycott has not been as good as of late, but he has the good upside. And everyone else on this team uh, it is a little bit overpriced, which is a concern. Uh, but two or three of the guys that start will likely pay off here. But trying to figure out which ones of those you know, four to five guys is going to be the right picks is going to be somewhat difficult on this slate because they are kind of streaky. Uh, but overall, they do have some upside, and so they're definitely worth taking a look at. As for Florida State... Uh, Worley and, uh, Cohorn both, uh, or Corhan both look like decent value plays with Lor Worley looking the best. You can make a smart argument for Darian Green and Caleb Mills. Not sure they're, not sure that I like either of them enough to look at them, uh, as roster spots because they are overpriced. But in small slate, with a small slate, this does make them somewhat interesting, especially considering Florida State is a higher scoring team. As for Nevada... Uh, in Wyoming, we're going to take a look at Nevada first. They're favored to win the game by six points, and you can take a look at Williams and Blackshear, but everyone else is very streaky and inconsistent with minutes. If you need someone in the 6,900 range, then Baker is worth a look, but he is very risky and hasn't played particularly great uh, throughout the season and a little bit inconsistent. As for Wyoming, this team is projected to lose and be the second lowest team uh, scoring team on the slate, but Maldondo, Thompson, and Wenzel all look interesting as they have slightly underpriced due to having super low floors. I don't think anyone else on the team has got any upside at all, though. And so if you wanted to take a look at one or two of those guys, I think that would be advantageous. Uh, but I wouldn't go any deeper than that. As for Baylor and Oklahoma State, this is the closest game on the slate at one point, And Baylor is projected to win. Uh, Baylor does look like an interesting team as they are the second best scoring team on the slate. And Love and Bonner are both interesting due to George being ruled out. Both players play over 20 minutes last game with him out. And uh, Love is somewhat safer, but both are worth a look. If Bonner did draw the start, he would be somebody to look at as well. Uh, but I do think that Love is safer. And then you could also take a look at Flagler and Bridges as they are both a bit overpriced, but still have some upside here. You could even look at Flo Th Thamba and Jonathan TT. I can't say that guy's name as this dude here. Um at uh, 5200 bucks, as they are both light Hail Mary options on the small slate, and so they would both be guys I would take in a little bit of consideration with. Oklahoma State also looks interesting today. Bryce Thompson is the safest play on this team, but they don't play many guys big minutes outside of him and Boone, and if this game gets out of hand, Boone loses a lot of minutes as well. Both of them are a bit overpriced, but Thompson is worth a look here. I do think that it's probably a good idea to avoid Oklahoma State for the most part. As for West Virginia and uh, Iowa State, we're going to start with West Virginia. They're favored to lose this game by four points. They are the lowest scoring team on the slate and being the underdog. But uh, T Mitchell, Stevenson, Toussaint, Matthews, and Johnson all deserve a look here. They're a little bit risky due to the low scoring of the team, but they all have some potential. And they have played pretty well um, s despite that. And uh, as you can see, that they're all, they're all pretty fairly priced. I wouldn't say they're overpriced. Uh, but they're not underpriced either, so they're kind of risky, but uh, still worth taking a look at. Uh, and then Iowa State being a four-point, uh, they they have the four-point spread on in their advantage. Um, if you look at Quasher and Holmes, they both look mildly interesting, but they are overpriced. Maybe good if you need someone priced in that range in their ranges for your last utility spot. Outside of that price, they went back from the team, uh, despite them being a little bit higher scoring than West Virginia. I just don't like the price range for any player on this team. Everybody's a little overpriced. So with that said, guys, that's what I have for the slate. Thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. And have a nice day, guys.